Everyone, welcome to the news in details. Now, up to 50 million Africans are going to be vaccinated against COVID-19 thanks to a three-year agreement between the African CDC and the Mastercard Foundation. During the official launch of the partnership, President Paul Kagame urged African countries to use this opportunity to build up their own health sectors. Sashnar has more on this report. At the beginning of this year, the African Union had set the objective that by the end of next year, 60% of the continent's population will have been vaccinated against COVID-19. Yet six months later, just around 2% have been vaccinated, with some still waiting for their second jab. The objective of the African Union, as uh, announced in the strategy of Africa of Development and Access Strategy, uh, and to vaccinate at least 60 percent of its population about 750 million uh, people or its entire adult population by the end of 2022. today uh, more than two percent of the africans have received uh, one uh, dose of the vaccine which is in, va in fact wearing and very far uh, from the objectives. The problem stems from the inequality between developing and developed nations, with the latter now having already vaccinated half of their collective population. Addressing this inequity is a moral imperative. It demands a response from governments, from the private sector, from international partners, from all of us. So today, I'm really honored, I'm humbled, and I'm grateful to announce a bold partnership. The MasterCard Foundation will deploy $1.3 billion over the next three years in partnership with the Africa CDC to save lives and livelihoods of millions of people and to hasten the economic recovery of the continent. During the official launch of the MasterCard Foundation, Africa CDC and African Union partnership aimed at ensuring equitable access to COVID-19 vaccines across the continent and hence saving lives and livelihoods. President Paul Kagame pointed out the need for African countries to use this opportunity to develop their health sectors. As Africa, we have to do our part with a sense of urgency and excellence. We won't get out of this crisis with a business as usual mindset. That means investing much more of our own domestic resources in our national health systems. The African Union Commission and the African Union Development Agency, NEPAD, have taken resources to assist member states with this priority. I want to close with a word of recognition and appreciation to the many other bilateral and multilateral partners who contribute to health in Africa. This new partnership between the MasterCard Foundation and Africa CDC builds on those investments and will help all of us accomplish even more together in the future. The MasterCard Foundation will provide up to 1.3 billion US dollars over the next three years, money that will be used to buy COVID vaccines, administer them to 50 million people on the continent and train personnel that will work in African labs that will be producing vaccines that include those to fight the spread of COVID-19. With the second round of vaccination now underway countrywide, beneficiaries are thanking the government for its tireless efforts to ensure that everybody is safe from COVID-19. Just like in the first round of vaccinations, the elderly were given priority this time around as well. We are happy to be vaccinated. Last time I was late coming here and did not get the jab. So this time around I was among the first. We thank our president for his efforts to get us these vaccines and improve our welfare. I am 86 years old and I am grateful to be vaccinated. We have the president to thank for this. Those being vaccinated say they also understand the importance of continuing to implement the preventive measures in place. 
I missed out last time and I am happy now to be among the first to be vaccinated. I will continue practicing the preventive measures because that is important too, due to the fact that by protecting yourself, you are also protecting others. I am always wearing a face mask and we are grateful for this jab and look forward to the second and final one, God willing. Assurances are being given that no one will be left out in the vaccination program. We are vaccinating people starting with the very oldest we have, and I believe in this case it was an individual who is 102 years old, moving down towards the 60-year minimum requirement. The first time around we used AstraZeneca and this time around it's Pfizer. No one should feel left out because the country's leadership is actively looking for vaccines and the goal is that by July next year, 7 million people will have been vaccinated. So it is only a matter of time before anyone who wants to be vaccinated gets the jab. Those who have been vaccinated this time around will wait three to four weeks before they can receive the second jab. Quality education is a powerful agent of change in a country. And on Tuesday, senators discussed some of the milestones the education sector has achieved. And this follows the government's considerable commitment to improve the quality of education. And they emphasized that despite the successes registered, there, are, there is still more to be done. Gabi Mouvigny continues. There is no doubt that education in the past years in Rwanda has undergone immense changes and transformation for the better. On Tuesday, the Social Welfare and Human Rights Committee at the Senate, alongside Senate counterparts, discussed views on the pillars of improving the quality of education in Rwanda. According to the statistics from the Ministry of Education, the committee outlined 12 indicators that suggest more efforts need to be put towards improving the quality of education. The Senator, Prof. Cyprien Niomugabo, says that education has a major impact on the society. When we talk of quality education, we look at, first of all, the problems of the society, the community. And the quality of education comes in solving, in giving solutions to those problems, be it a problem in economy, in science, in technology, in public relations, name it. Uh, we have been showing indicators of quality education. And those indicators, some are international. We share them with other communities, but the first thing is that the basics, the foundations of quality education is the cultural values. Cultural values must be the basics, the foundation of quality education. According to the statistics from the Ministry of Education, the ratio of students to laptops and books is still very low, although they are pleased with the progress that has been made so far. I'm very happy where we are because uh, at least a student once he's at school, at least can touch to the machine, can, you, can learn something using machine uh, compared to the last time. So, so far we are at the good stage, if I can say, uh, and the books we use, we have a library, we have the books from lab, but we have some subjects that we don't have the books. The Minister of State for Primary and Secondary Education at the Ministry of Education says there are various projects in progress meant to continue to improve the quality of education. First, I would uh, say that we have been increasing the number of teachers uh, this year and uh, last year. We have uh, hired more than 28,000 teachers, uh, uh, and this is to make sure that the new schools, the new classrooms that you have constructed um, have uh, enough teachers. Uh, previously, uh, school feeding was only for secondary students, but now we want, uh, school, we want every kid who goes to school to be able to have a meal at school. Um, and uh, there has been um, some districts that have been trying this, and the results have been very good because now we see more kids coming at school and more kids staying at school. Uh, and you have been working on uh, uh, infrastructure and to make sure that uh, the schools that did not have school feeding before are now equipped uh, to be able to provide the meals at school. 
uh, and we hope that by uh, this next school year, uh, the program will have reached uh, everyone. In efforts to reduce the overcrowding in classrooms, the Ministry of Education had set out to construct 22,505 new classrooms in both primary and secondary schools nationwide during the 2020 and 2021 academic year. Gabi Muvuni for RTV. Thank you, Gabby, for that report. Now, the Ministry of Agriculture has called upon coffee farmers to uproot coffee trees and plant new ones so that yields do not decrease. Across the country, there are 27 million coffee trees that are more than 30 years old. Fiona Babazi has more on this report. Coffee trees require proper care, which includes uprooting them every seven years. Many of these coffee farmers say the fear of losses makes them not uproot their trees. These coffee trees are from before 1957, at the time of the village chief called Rusukamimba. They used to dig holes and they would put in manure. I was told that by my parents. There are trees over 40 years, some even 50 years old. Some were planted during the colonial times. The director general of the Rwanda Trading Company explains that not uprooting the trees has repercussions. The problem we have is that we do not have enough yields and the little we get needs a lot from us before we export it. During a meeting that brought together the Ministry of Agriculture and other stakeholders, the Minister of State in the Ministry of Agriculture and Animal Resources called on farmers to properly care for their coffee trees. A coffee tree after being planted grows after three to four years and gets bigger in five years. And that's what is discouraging some of the farmers. But that should not be the case as the trees eventually grow and give them good money. We are also calling on them to encourage younger generations to join the trade and only they can do so. The Ministry of Agriculture and Animal Resources indicates that in a census done in 2015, around 90 million coffee trees were recorded, but 30% of them were planted 30 years ago. The ministry also shows that in 2018-2019, Rwanda exported 21.652 tons of coffee, earning the country 69 million US dollars, while in 2019-2020, 19.723 tons were exported bringing in 60 million U.S. dollars. The military high court on Tuesday heard the case of 37 former Rud Urunana and P5 militants accused of threatening Rwanda's security. It, it was a group led by Sergeant Dineshuti Emmanuel who escaped justice, which led to the appearance of the remaining 36 people in the case in court. Of the participants in today's hearing, 11 were heard by the court and questions were asked to determine their role in the crimes against them. Overall, the common denominator was the guilty plea of seven of the eight charges against the defendants, but they all denied the crime of murder, given that there are many who claim to have joined the group forcibly, forcibly claiming that much of what they did was not of their own free will. The prosecution pointed out that all of them admitted to the police that they had voluntarily joined the group. Among the fighters were those arrested in various attacks on Rwandan soil, including those arrested in an attack in Musanze district in October 2019. The court proceedings will continue on Wednesday. Moving on to Inbujesela district, there is a campaign in schools called Get Roll to remind students to abide by the COVID-19 preventive measures in place. This is due to an observation that students no longer remember to implement the measures. Take a look. The mayor of Budyasa district, Mutawazi Richard, reminded students at the Nyamata Catholic School to keep adhering to the COVID-19 preventive measures. <laughs> Welcome, 
It is a campaign launched by Bugesera District Council members at various educational institutions in the district where it reminds students of the COVID-19 preventive measures while not interfering with their classes. This is done after realizing that some students have already given up on preventive measures as evidenced by the way they behave when they are on their way from or to school. However, these students seem to be fully aware of these measures. We wear face masks, wash our hands and practice social distancing. I'm aware of the measures. We have to wear face masks, wash our hands and avoid social gatherings. The reason why we sometimes remove the face mask is because it's uncomfortable to breathe in them. On one hand, some schools have taken another step to limiting students from toys, which they usually share, in order to mitigate the spread of the COVID-19 virus amongst them. As a precaution, we prevent them from playing games that require them to be close to each other in such a way that each student gets his or her own ball or jumping rope even on their way home in the school bus. We are in the bus with them so as to make sure they are not sitting too close to each other. We began this method since COVID-19 first hit. We were able to properly follow or adhere to all measures and guidelines. The mayor of Ujesira district, Mutabazi Richard, says the campaign is aimed at reminding students and parents to adhere to the COVID-19 preventive measures and even at home. When students are inside the school premises, they adhere to the COVID-19 preventive measures, but on their way home, that's when they neglect them, which is why we had to do something about it. Parents, institutions and we as leaders are required to educate children in a way they understand because it requires a different approach when it comes to children through using other techniques which would help them to have a better understanding. In Bujesera district, there are 147 schools of which this campaign will reach. The district will also be conducting awareness campaigns in other sections of the population. The National Unity and Reconciliation Commission has noted that the unity of Rwandans is one of the keys in the fight against genocide because those atrocities were perpetuated through divisionism. Houses have been built for genocide survivors by the community, including those who participated in the genocide. The campaign will also be more emphasized among the youth in order for unity and reconciliation to prevail. Billboards with the principles of unity and reconciliation are to be set up in 12 sectors of Muhanga district. The campaign is also to be taken to the cell level, while in school debates will be organized promoting the culture of peace after teachers have been properly trained on how to moderate them. Moving on on Tuesday, Rwanda launched a project to fight against the contamination of the chemical mercury in water, in line with the minim Minamata Convention that Rwanda is a signatory. The quantity of the spread of this chemical is currently unknown. However, it dominates the mining areas where West is stored and Lake Kivu. The Director General of Rwanda Environment Management Authority, Rama, Juliet Kabeira, further explained how the project shall be executed. Take a look. We also have uh, mercury here and there. Unfortunately, as of now, we don't know how much that we have. That is why we uh, made sure that we, got, we get this project so that we can have a deep assessment. We know the sectors, the quantities, we know the trends, and then come up with uh, the most appropriate management plan uh, for us to be able to phase down uh, this mercury. Uh, m most of it is found in uh, mining-related activities, especially gold mining, but we also have a lot of mercury in electronic waste. Uh, electronic waste like computers, like uh, batteries, like telephones. There is a lot of mercury depots there and it is not waste, it is a precious metal. If we can be able to extract it and send it back to the industries that reuse it, I think that's what circular economy is all about.